with Tracy in LA. Hi everyone, welcome back to my new podcast, Dance Journey. We are in season two. I'm calling this season two because season one I did six episodes of like my own dance journey and so now I'm interviewing guests. You're my second guest. I'm interviewing dancers about their dance journeys. Um, so this is Caroline. Hi everyone, I'm Caroline. Um, and we're going to talk about her in a second, but first of all, me and Caroline just took would we say the hardest hip hop class of our life? Hardest ever. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Tracy, for dragging you into this. These were the guys from Vancouver that were visiting. I said, Tracy, let's just go take this cool class, <laughs> not even knowing how hard it was. It was so hard. It was so hard. I did have fun though. I, I enjoyed it too. <laughs> I haven't watched a video yet. I'm kind of scared to. We'll have to, I don't know if I'm gonna post I Yours is for you. We were in different groups, so yes. um, Caroline can decide what she wants to do with her video. I'm going to look at mine and see, but I mean, maybe I'll post it just to be like, this is the reality of taking the hardest hip hop class of your life. But fortunately, I could see, I ended up going almost to the front because I this girl was blocking me. So I was just like, I'm going to go in the front and like be able to see. But it was just, what would you say? Okay, first of all, what are the names of these people? I put them up here. Uh, Adrian and Kevin. They're from Adrian, Vancouver. I think it's Kelvin, oh, right? Yeah. Maybe it is Kelvin. What is Kelvin, Kevin. No, it's not. It's definitely not Kevin. <laughs> it's like Kelvin or Calvin. Also, what happened when we were walking in? Oh my goodness. We were trying to find out where the class was and just like totally clueless. At Movement Lifestyle, they don't like tell you wh what room it's in until like right before. Or, they like have 10 studios and we're just walking around. Da -da -da. <laughs> Do you know where class is? And it happened to be the teacher. He's like, I think it's in here. Yeah. She's like, is this? I think she said to Kelvin, is this do you know where Kelvin's class is? <laughs> and it was him. Um, so yeah, I Awkward. put, I wrote it down. It's Kelvin two is his last name T U and Adrian Vendiola. And they're from Vancouver. And they're the directors of a dance team in Vancouver. And there were a bunch of competition dancers. There's a huge dance competition every year called Vibe. And teams come from all over the world, actually. And so they were all in town. And Movement Lifestyle really is into building community. And so they tapped some of these choreographers that were already in town for the competition to do a community class. So um, just to bring the community together and to experience dance with people from all over the world. That's always been Movement Movement Lifestyles uh, mission, which I love about that. People come through internationally all the time and you get to meet people that, you know, from all over the world. I know. I love that when people from my dance classes are like posted on the teacher's stories, like I will follow them right away. And then all of a sudden, like none of it's in English. And I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Like, where are they from? Like, I love that. So and you've been taking from Movement Lifestyle for how long? I think I started taking from them in 2010. I started Whoa. taking Kyle. I had no idea they were even around that long. Yeah, yeah, they've been around for a while. And um, Kyle Hanagami, who's a big choreographer now, he was just kind of starting out at that time. And I remember I would come over to, they were in North Hollywood at the time. And then it was doable. Now it's it's actually really hard because <laughs> I haven't been taking them. I used to take them all the time, like once a week. And, you know, that's the thing about Did dance. you take from Kyle or from Movement Lifestyle? From Kyle. Oh. Like he used to teach the end. Wow. I didn't know he taught Friday. there. Yeah, oh my gosh. It was, so, it was like a long time ago. And um, that's the thing. It's like after you take people for a while, you get to know their style. Yeah. It's more fun when you actually get the, their I movement. loved Kai. I took his class, the master class at one time, and it was so fun. Um, Okay. But before we get into that, I was just curious because like I literally hadn't heard of Movement Lifestyle till this building till like this year or something and I thought they were like a brand new studio and I was like how do they have such good teachers and all these classes and all these people come and I thought it was just like this random new studio but then I realized like oh because I googled it or something and I was like I think they've been around for a long time and this is just a new building yes they have but they ran into trouble during the pandemic and they, okay. they tried raising money and then oh. they had to close down okay and then another group of dancers took over that old studio and called it something else and then movement lifestyle just reopened last year so it is new oh in the sense that this, this location okay. which is to class just opened in september of 2023 so it's really new oh but and so they didn't have any place for a little while for i guess three three years maybe oh yeah, like close to like 20, maybe 20 or 21 because i felt like before the pandemic i had heard it mentioned before i was like i think i had heard of that studio but i just didn't like know much about it or anything so yeah. i really only took class at like edge before the pandemic but okay before we get into all that though okay so tell me t 
talk about what you thought about this class well, about I mean I've been taking this, dance these class, Canada teachers but I've been taking dance class for about 25 years and this is the hardest class I think I've ever taken <laughs> that I makes mean, me feel better because it was so really freaking hard but like even some of those people were were having a, a challenging time you know and even the really like, good dancers I mean because you could tell you can tell when someone's a really good dancer who just doesn't totally have the choreography but you can still tell they're like really good yeah but they just like don't have every detail of the choreography yet um yeah, I saw, I noticed a little bit of that. But some of, the, I mean, I didn't know we were going to be dancing with a bunch of competition dancers who just competed like yesterday yeah. or whatever, or Friday or something. I didn't either. Um, <laughs> we were the only ones who weren't competition. We were like, like oh, a bunch of competition dancers and me and Caroline. <laughs> but I, I'm glad we did it. I, yeah. The choreography was really cool. I feel like we both felt like if they taught it at like a slower pace, I felt like if, you know, we had a four hour class, I could have gotten it. <laughs> um, so yeah. I'm going to go home and practice a little bit. Are you? Yeah. You're so good at, I feel like I see that you do that. I yeah. haven't really practiced at home dances from class since like the pandemic, but okay. So now let's go to the beginning. So Caroline. Okay. Oh, yes. by the way, this is how I know Caroline. We both take Nico O'Connor's jazz funk love. class who we <laughs> love we both try to go like to his class as much as possible at millennium and at movement lifestyle um and we met there maybe like a f couple months ago a few months ago yeah not I mean, so I've seen you for we've like seen time, each other but, but like recently started more chatting yeah. like recently but there's still a lot i don't know about caroline so this a lot of the stuff i'm asking her i don't actually know the answer so i'm excited just to get to know you in general um and just to be become better friends but uh yeah, so you've been taking Nico for how long? I have been taking Nico for, I'd say, about 14 years. Wow. Since about 2010. Wow. Yes. And I started taking more because he was teaching at Gold's Gym in Hollywood, okay. uh, where I took him twice a week. So I got wow. to take him twice a week for free. Wow. It was amazing. So we taught the same choreography, but just a, like less. Yeah. And a since slower it's a gym. Pace. Yeah. Yeah. Since it's a gym. But, uh, so that's how I know Nico. And then I would take him at the edge too, if I wanted to learn more choreography. Yeah. So like, like here we learned half. Nico would teach maybe half of a routine. Okay. Once. Okay. And so I'd want to go to the edge or another studio. And learn, learn like all of it. Yeah. So that's how I know Nico. Um, and he recently choreographed my first dance for my wedding. I, I got married. Uh, yeah. September. So, so congratulations. Up oh my gosh. It's exciting. Yeah. Um, Okay, going back, I feel like there's so much to talk about, but okay, where are you from originally? I am originally from Pennsylvania, but I've oh. lived most of my life here. Okay. LA, but I'm definitely an East Coaster. Okay, interesting. Yeah. You So what brought you to LA? I went to school. I went to grad school at Pepperdine. Oh, nice. Okay, so, so beautiful ended, there. Yeah, it's hard to study there. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, how? yeah, I used to know someone that worked there, so I would go to like visit her and I... Just like driving, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's the most beautiful place ever. I don't know. It was really yeah, hard to, to how study you could there. study. <laughs> yeah, no, we were at the beach every day. What did you study? I studied business. Oh, okay. Yeah, I had a master's. Well, I, I studied business at Penn State. I'm originally from Pennsylvania. Okay. So um, I grew up in Pennsylvania, New York. And I went to Penn State and then came out here to get my graduate degree. So I got my business, my MBA. Okay, nice. And then I got into the music business after that oh. so I got into entertainment and then because my plan was never to stay in California I oh. always thought I would go back and either live in New York or DC um then I got a job in entertainment and then just was in the you know just in the music business. what was your job I worked for Interscope Records okay I was working with all the hip-hop artists oh my gosh that's like so cool Snip Dog and Tupac what I know I was there like in the, in the heyday of music when there were still like record stores and Wow. CDs and what did you stuff. like do specifically? I I did I worked the R and B artists like Black Street, so I would call retail stores and get them to play our records. Oh cool. And then I moved into sales, so I would travel and meet with all the buyers of like record store chains like Music Land or Blockbuster at the time. Oh wow. Yeah, and so I just got to travel and that's and party. so cool. Did you like it? I loved it. And then at one point I got to travel on the road with Dr. Dre. Oh my gosh. And my boss was like, Don't come home, just drink Hennessy and Coke. He loves you. So I was just partying with Dr. J <laughs> in Atlanta and Chicago. It was so what? fun. And then I would take Snoop Dogg to the distributors. And Oh, fun. my gosh. Okay, wait. So can you, like, can you tell? 
any stories about Dr. Dre or Snoop Dogg? Like anything that's just like fun or funny or like they were just super nice. Like, yeah. Surprisingly, like they were just really You're like cool. surprised because of their hardcore music. Yeah, You're like they're actually they're really like nice. Dogs and stuff. And I mean we walked we worked across the, the hallway from Death Row Records. Uh-huh. So, Shug Knight and all of those people were there. But I found them to be super nice. Wow. <laughs> that's so them. cool. And then I would as part of my job, like when I would travel to different cities, I would go into and visit the little mom and pop um, rap stores. And so here's like little Caroline. I'm like, so like zero swag. Yeah. You're like the funniest, like, you're just like this cute, sweet, like little person. And you're like with these, like, yeah, with all these people rappers and oh my gosh, that's so funny. But they loved it though, because I never tried to be, I never tried to be cool. I yeah. Never tried to be, you know, they like probably, I, I could like see I them had, loving like, you. Yeah. Swag or anything. Yeah. yeah. I was like, that was nice, but then that's all. Yeah. 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 That's so funny. Okay. So um, how, so how long did you do? Cause you're an actress now. Yes. So how long did what you a, do that what job? Strange, what a strange, like, yeah. Uh, I did that about 10 years and then had my own record label with my best friend and marketing company. And then we just got burnt out from being in the record business for okay. all the time. And she took some time off. Well, actually she moved to Nashville to pursue songwriting. Okay. And I was completely lost and drove up the coast and, uh, was just like, what am I doing with my life? Uh, I went camping up in Olympic National Park all by myself. Whoa. Just trying to find myself. Okay. I was like, didn't have a job, didn't have a boyfriend. Was Can I ask how old you were at that point? At that point, I was probably in my, I was probably in my 30s. Okay. Or maybe in my 20s. I might have been in my 20s. Okay. I was pretty young. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was, just, no, my, no, I was in my 30s for sure. Um, and then I found this spiritual community. Uh, that my therapist at the time rec- thought I would like. And I grew up Catholic. So okay. It was like so anti religion. Okay. And it was non denominational. Okay. Uh, it was called Agape. And I loved it right away, but because I had all this real- religious bad- baggage, I didn't want to go back right away. So it took me some time. But when I did go back, I really dove in and I got my light. I started taking classes and became a spiritual counselor. Oh. So I my license as a oh, spiritual wow. counselor. Oh, okay. wow. Okay. I haven't been practicing thing in a long time but I got that and in the meantime I knew it was going to be four years before I was ever going to make money doing that so I don't know I was just trying to figure out what I wanted to do and because you went back to school for that yeah when where did you go to school for that uh, it was at the church it was oh it was church. through the church yeah, but it was still a four-year like thing. yeah it was okay like two years of classes and then two years of practical training okay until I actually got a license I so see it was four okay years. And the whole thing for me was like, I didn't want to be in school that long. Both my parents were doctors and of course they wanted me to be a doctor. Yeah. I don't want to be in school that long. Yeah. I ended up being in school much longer (laughs) than I could. I could have been a doctor. That's Um, hilarious. So so regret that. I I don't regret that at all. But, um, so I was hanging out with a bunch of actors and I remember asking the universe, please give me a sign, like what I'm supposed to do. And so somebody I was in classes with, he's like, Hey, will you read sides with me? And all these things started happening around acting. I'm like, really? This is what you want me to do? Someone in your one of your spiritual classes was an actor. Yes. Okay. And so he asked me to read sides with him. And he okay. Was like, yeah. He was like, oh, oh wow. okay. I'm like, okay, so we're doing this now. And then I booked an independent film. I just went to an open call. Just for Whoa. Fun. I didn't even have a picture at the time. Oh, my I God. I went to an open call. Wow. A lead in an independent what? film. I know. Like an actual feature? It was a yeah, short yeah. film. No, no. It was a feature Whoa, film. Whoa. That's so, so fun. cool. It was Mike Path. It was kind of like Friends, you know, like a friend, yeah. like extended Friends episode, but okay. at the beach. Um, it was really, really fun. It was just a bunch of Venice friends and all their little wow. escapades. Um, and then, so started taking acting class, got an agent through the, through the uh, studio, yeah. booked my first, I mean, it was like my first or second audition and things were rolling. I'm like, Oh cool. This is great. This is what I'm doing now. And you know, it, it's not that easy being an artist. And yeah. there were many years where I, I didn't have work and so yeah. I had to get other jobs. And so I've had different, different kind of part-time jobs. What was like, that. What was like your your least favorite random job you took when you were acting, and like your most favorite side job? If you like had to pick of all the random jobs you had while you were acting, what was your like least favorite and most favorite? Okay, my least favorite was working at. Um, I worked for this wealthy family. I worked for the business manager, uh-huh. and I worked three days a week from nine to five. 
And it was great. They paid me well. I was in Westwood. It was actually in my old Interscope office built, like in that building where okay. I had Interscope, which was crazy. It was on Wilshire and Westwood. But there was nothing to do. And oh. I was so bored. Oh, interesting. I was getting paid so much money. It was so <gasps> bored. And there were really strict hours, too. It was like 9 to 5. And, and towards the end, I was there like 4 or 5 years working, you know, 24 hours a week, but it really cut into my dance schedule. And so, <laughs> so I left, I left that, that job. Um, I think it was like t- 2007 and, um, have kind of been just working freelance ever since. It, doing, so doing like business stuff, like office management. That's what you've been doing around acting. Yeah. Around acting. Oh, or bookkeeping. Cause I have a finance major. Okay. Okay. And what so wait now you were like it it messed up your dance schedule okay so we need it this is this is technically about your dance journey i just like know you're here for acting and so i yeah, no, that's no, no, good no. to know how no, you got but, into that but it's the same way i got into dance. yeah how did that start then did it start around the same time that you got into acting around the same time because while i was taking classes at this spiritual community this dancer came up to me we were having um an end of end of class celebrations for okay. a party. And I didn't know her. She wasn't in my little pod of people. You know, there were, I don't know, there were maybe 50 people and we would break up in groups of eight, but she wasn't in my group. She came up to me uh, at the party. She's like, you're, she's a choreographer. She goes, you're a dancer. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not a dancer. <laughs> I was like, yeah, sure. Getting drunk at the bar and, and you know, woohoo. Yeah, dancing, you know, on the, and just getting wasted and, you know, whatever. That kind of dancing. Uh, I really was like, no, I'm not. But she saw something in me. Yeah. And she, um, she's like, you have to come to my class. She also taught a stretch class, which was incredible too. Uh, so I started taking her stretch. And Do you remember class. who this teacher was? Oh, yeah. Her name is Michelle LeMay. Okay. Um, I've, I've kind of lost touch with her, but she used to work with Corey Everson, who was a big, um, like fitness person. Okay. You know, she, like the Jane Fonda's of the okay. world, like in that arena. So she kind of did that. Um, and where did she teach back then? She taught, well, we, I was living on the West side. So she taught at Gold's Gym in Venice. Okay. That's where my first dance class was. Okay. Gold's Gym Venice. Cause that's how I, um, I'm not a trained dancer. I have learned dance just on my own and through taking dance classes at the gym. Yeah. And so that was how I actually started my dance journey. Okay. Through that person. And I, we ended up being friends. I ended up working for her. I mean. We and what were, style did she teach? She was more jazzy. Okay. And I was terrified when I took my first dance class. I stood in the back and I was like, I I don't know if I can do this because I was really uncoordinated. Not that I was uncoordinated because I played tennis as a child and was really, really good. So I did have coordination, but the, um, like getting the choreography as just brand new, it was really kind of overwhelming. Yeah. In the back for many, many years. And then slowly I would make my way to the front as I got more confident. But also I wanted to see because I'm short. Yeah. You know, it's like I had to see. I understand that. <laughs> but it was because nice it was like, a, you know, it, it was a very supportive environment. You know, the gym, like there's not too high of expectations. Yeah. There just to have fun. And she was super encouraging. Yeah. And so... So my experience just starting out was was so positive, and I just kept going. And so I would take Michelle, and I would take Lisa. So I would take maybe four dance classes a week. Lisa was a hip hop instructor, and she's still teaching hip hop. She's what's her last name? Lisa Kellogg. Okay. She's been I'm trying she's to a think. West okay. Staple, and has been teaching okay. forever. Does um, she teach somewhere now? Yeah, she still teaches probably somewhere on the west side. I okay, think. okay. She taught a lot of kids' classes, too. Okay. So I think she, she's doing that, and she does flash mobs and stuff. So she's oh, still cool. working okay. as a dancer. But, um, so you started with kind of the jazzy-ish teacher and then hip-hop. Yeah, and she was very much like old-school hip-hop. Okay. 90s hip-hop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I realized I had a travel pass with Gold's Gym that I could use in Gold's Hollywood. And at that time, people like Trisha and... Trisha Miranda were teaching there, um, Danielle Jones, like all these like major choreographers. Okay. It was Hollywood. Okay. Right. And even, you know, before then, Tabitha Napoleon taught at the gym. And I'll, I'll get to like bringing them full circle with, with that. Um, so I started taking dance classes there, which were more challenging because, you know, I had taken these people for at that point, maybe like five years. So I kind of got their style. And so you took you took for about five years at the Golds on the West in Venice, in Venice yeah. before you took at the Golds in Hollywood. Yes. Okay. I was living in Santa Monica. So okay. 
didn't even know anything about a dance world. Okay. I didn't know anything beyond Gold's okay. Gold Venice. <laughs> and so I don't even know how I went to Hollywood, but I did. And I, I just started taking dance classes there and I fell in love with it. I fell in love with Hollywood. Yeah. And so I was commuting back and forth and was in the car for easily an hour and a half to two hours just to go to dance class. And it's because... What was it about those dance classes that made you, like, drive all that way? I think I was starting to grow as a dancer and getting challenged by Mm -hmm. other instructors and was just ready to take my dancing to the next level. Yeah. And I made friends pretty early on, too. I mean, I had friends in Venice, too, but I I made friends quickly in Hollywood. And it just became more my my vibe. Yeah. And so I eventually moved to... Hollywood, like okay. Hollywood area, like okay. Beverly Groves, specifically so I could take classes yeah. there wow. instead of, um, and then I was also take, starting to take classes at the Edge. Okay. Um, Do you remember what your first class at Edge was? Hmm. It must have been my friend Ben Allen. Yeah. I took, I used to take Ben Allen. You did? No, I, I, I used to take Dean Alex bass. You know oh, him? Yeah. And I was mostly taking his, but then Ben Allen would do a beginning hip hop before Dean's beginning class that I used to take. And so eventually I was like, I should come early and just take Ben's. So I maybe took Ben for about four months or so before the pandemic. So that was it. But I loved him. He's like so great. Yeah. yeah and Ben was one of the people that w- whose classes I took there. And Ben, interestingly enough, he and I became best friends. Aww. And uh, I probably took Ben's class for, I don't know, maybe three or four years. And we joked, you know, because like when you take somebody consistently – you get, they get really good, first of all, and especially at your particular style. And Ben looked around the class one day, you know, it's like, these are all Ben regulars. And he he made this joke and he said, we really should battle other gyms. You guys are so good. We should battle other gyms. I went up to him. I said, Ben, we've got to Because you were taking him at Gold's? Mm -hmm. Okay. Gold's Hollywood. Okay. I said, Ben, we, we need to do this. And he, it was a total joke. So we put together this dance competition called Gym Crew Challenge. And we invited gyms like Spectrum, Equinox. Oh, like my all gosh. over the That's city. So it was so great. How did you battle? How did you do it? We had... Okay, first of all, these people are taking dance classes regularly, right? And they don't have the opportunity to perform on a stage. Yeah. So that was part of... I mean, yes, it was a competition, but we also wanted to showcase right. people because they're yeah. friends and they're co-workers. Nobody could see them. How yeah. How joy they get yeah. from dancing. So, that, so it was that, but we would ask instructors to put together uh, a two-minute routine. They could do anything, and uh, people really went all out. We had teams come from Thousand Oaks, like really wow. far in the South Bay. Um, but they were all from gyms. Gyms. Wow, that's and, so cool. Yeah, and we did it in um, we did it in L.A. We did it in theaters like the Montalban Theater. But then we went to New York. We sold out the Ailey Theater our first time. Wow. But our first judges were Tabitha and Napoleon. And so we would get celebrity judges. So you like help put all this together with okay, Ben or with what? Ben, with Ben. This wow, was our, that's like, so cool. Our little baby together, and um, we put this together in six weeks. Whoa! So not only do we put together, a, oh my a gosh, dance competition, but I mean we lived and breathed this for six weeks. Wow! And uh, Tabitha and Napoleon, I guess I didn't know this, but they were so on board because they had started at the gym. They oh started teaching wow, at the gym that's so before cool. They got really big and. Um, you know, we would get uh, other celebrities like that were on So You Think You Can Dance or Dancing with the oh Stars. Oh, my gosh. It was so fun, and people loved it. How yeah. long were you guys, like, doing those for? We did it for the last one I did was 2015. Ben kind of stepped down, and Ben's last one was 2013. So we did this from 2010 to 2015. Okay. Wow. And Ben stepped down because he was doing his Groove 3, and okay. he just didn't have it in him to do yeah. two things. So I took it on, and it was a lot to produce yeah that's competition by yourself yeah i can't it, it sounds like a lot even with somebody so it was and uh, but you know it's like everyone's like oh you've got to do it you've got to do it and we did i did it until i couldn't anymore and and um 
I don't know. I always like want to bring it back, but we would have special guest performances. Like Nico put Nico and his friend Todd put a a kids group together, and they just like threw down. Aww. And, or we would get like a, a vibe dance competition team to perform, and and I I did like I would just research uh, competitions and hey, would you mind? Would you contribute? You know, would you share your gift with us? Is vibe is vibe just like a well known dance competition? I because I had never even I don't know anything about it. I just heard them talk about it like oh, today. Yeah. It's, it's huge. <laughs> okay, it's, it's like a really big one they have it every year there's a couple like really big dance competitions um like world of dance and it's with has adults or just or is it mostly kids i mean adults like probably like young adults young adults i would say probably you know anywhere from 16 to 25 okay okay sure what the age range is but definitely not like older adults because yeah yeah yeah. like older adults would do a showcase piece yeah you know um but people were so just generous in wanting to give up their talents and, and be supportive. And in the beginning, we partnered with a nonprofit, so we would give a certain amount to, you know, like, uh, what was the one? There was one, what was that? Something about Souls for Shoes or something. Okay. It was this, like, uh, organization that gave shoes to people that didn't have them. Oh, cool. So, you know, like, it had to have, like, some sort of dance. Because everyone, um, did people pay to be in the comp, in, like, the showcase competition um, and then people paid to see it as well. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the the people that, the dancers, you know, like the ones that were competing. Yeah. But we offered a prize. We had like a $500 prize. Okay. And then we would get sponsors to give us other kinds of like free classes or spa, you know. Like we did it up pretty, I mean. It wow. Was, it was a big undertaking. But it was just, it didn't, um, what was it? Like it just, the financial stuff was like really hard. Yeah. You know, it's like maybe I broke even. Yeah, wow. So and so you were doing that at the same time as like dancing, acting and like whatever other freelance type of job you were doing or Yes. Okay. Yeah, that was a lot. <gasps> wow. And so yeah. when we stopped doing that, I kind of focused on doing more things that actually made money. Yeah. <laughs> you know, cuz it was like it was it was a labor of love. I mean, yeah. I, I loved doing it and every single person, I mean, just the joy that people got to experience and the people that love them, it was just it was incredible. Yeah. Wow. And you probably met, like, made so many, like, friends and connections with so many different dancers I, and I teachers did, and choreographers yeah. and, like, yeah. So wow. Cool. And you were still, and was it still, like, you were mostly taking at Edge and Gold's? Or had you started, did, had you tried any other studios at that point, at, during that time? At that point, I, I think I started branching out to, like, ML, The Edge. Um, it wasn't until, like, the pand- after the pandemic that I started going out more, like, going to Team Millie. And, um, so T. Millie's playground. been around for a long time too, mm. or like since before the pandemic, a little bit, but cause I hadn't really heard of it a little bit, but they kind of, they got bigger when ML closed. Oh, I see. Like everybody okay. that was at ML went to T. Millie to okay. teach because there was that, there was that opening. And so I think people are still doing both. I mean, I haven't been at T. Millie in a while, but I used to take this guy who I loved. He was like one of my favorite teachers. He's on tour with Madonna right now. We'll have to take him to get Oh my gosh, who is he? Durrell. Oh, Um, yes. I think Durrell, what is his last name? uh, Bullock. Okay. Bullock. I think I've heard of him. He's so Um, amazing. He's so fun. Teaches, like, what does he teach? Is it hip hop? Jazz funk. funk. And you've mostly always done jazz funk and hip hop? Or have you tried any other styles? I mean, Michelle was kind of jazzy. Okay, I right. Really didn't love. Um, <laughs> well, I took this woman recently that was uh, street jazz. I guess it was more. Ja- it was more jazz funk. It wasn't. I've seen some of her stuff that was jazzy. It was okay. It wasn't going to be jazzy. But we did like across I the floor. I love jazzy. We did across, we're doing a warm up and then across the floor, and I was like, oh no, it's my worst nightmare is doing across the floor when people do ciphers and they make you do those freestyle circles. Oh my gosh. Across the floor is okay, but the ciphers, which I only just learned that word this year because I had to do it in a class and I was like, and it was a floor work class. So it was like very beginner break dancing. And I was like, wait, what, what are we going to do? I only know like two moves in this class. <laughs> it was rough, but they, and they took a video, but actually I was like, okay, it wasn't too bad, but oh my gosh, that's yeah. Yeah. That was terrifying. Um, so but then, the okay. The floor was just walking. We're, we're just oh. jazz walks, but surprisingly it was kind of difficult. I don't know why, but some was- teachers, well, maybe a lot of teachers like, yeah, there's kind of like a specific way they want you to do the jazz walks. So I'm like, oh, we're just walking. And then they're like, oh, you need to, you know, first of all, I struggle with like going like toe heel. <laughs> I'm like, cause it's not the natural way you walk. 
Yeah. And I didn't grow up dancing. So there's like that. And then like, you know, you, they want you to move your hips a certain way. Or some teachers want you to walk completely on your toes mm. in the jazz walks. So jazz walks, they're not as easy as you not think as necessarily. Easy as sound. But okay. So then when you were doing all this dance and you were like, okay, I'm growing as a dancer and you were obviously wanting to be challenged more. And then it's obviously this whole undertaking took a lot of your time with dance. Did you, um, during that time, did you feel like you had any specific, like, dance goals as far as, like, did you want to book a job as a dancer or, or like, be able to do an acting role that had dance? Or were you just kind of like, I just like growing at this and it's cool to put this, like, show together and we'll just see what other opportunities come? Or, like, what, did you have any specific goals, I guess, is the question, kind of, with your dancing? Definitely. I did have a goal and I still have a goal, which is to dance in like a film or television. Okay. Or yeah. That's um, super cool. I've done like music videos, like, you know, have small, you? Yeah, okay. smaller music That's videos. Awesome. I've done flash mobs. I mean, I've done performance yeah. kind of things. I used to, Ben and I had this dance group that I, uh, my friend Karen and I put together called the Orientas. This was all around the oh gym. Oh my gosh. This was all around the gym crew challenge phase. Um, and Karen was a, like a criminal, uh, defense attorney and she okay. was Jewish okay. and so we would joke and say that we were Orientas and so we put together this dance troupe that was all Jewish and Asian what <laughs> And so oh we my would gosh. play, you know, we would perform at like the most random events. And, but we were on this television show called Your Chance to Dance. As okay. As Orientas. And we did uh, a rendition of the Pussycat Dolls. How did you even like get on that show? How did we get on that show? Uh, how did we get on that show? I think it was probably Ben, or we saw a casting oh, for it or something. Okay. But, um, and I've done, what What else did I do? Um, I did a flash mob. For, this is also how I know Nico from 2009. I met Nico in 2009. We worked on a job together, a dance job together, which Ben, Alan, our circles are so, like, intertwined. Wow. But, um, so Ben told us about this casting and we all auditioned. Ben was the only, he told like everybody in class. So like five of us auditioned, right? We all booked the job and, and Nico booked it on his own. Ben did not book the job. What? I know, isn't that crazy? <laughs> I'm like, how did you not? That is so crazy. Because, you know, they were looking for a specific Yeah, specific look. look. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe somebody who wasn't so professional looking, like, you know. Yeah. Like a professional that makes sense. At, yeah. at that time. And he was pursuing he was pursuing dance as a profession at yeah. the time. So um, that's how I met Nico. We did a f- flash mob for a and It was a promo for MC Hammer. So we'd all what? wear these gold that's hammer pants. Oh, my gosh. And then just like a random, I think I had a pink, oh, my gosh, one of those pink kind of Hindu tops. It was really <laughs> random. You had to wear the, the gold pants and we would learn choreography, but it was super fun. But that's when I met Nico for the first time. But did you like, how were you finding these castings like the same way you were finding like castings for acting or was it just through word of mouth you would hear about like an audition for dance or something? Or like, how did you even like find these opportunities? Just basically through friends. Just it was, through it hearing about it. Okay. And I had tried to get a dance agent because I wanted to do more yeah. dance. Not necessarily touring, but, com- you know, yeah. music video, commercial. Well, that's um, LA. That's what we have here. So, yeah. yeah. A TV, a TV, you know, dancing mom. Whatever. Yeah. Um, so I would go to the, you know, the agencies used to have these casting, open casting, like MSA. We're having dance yeah. auditions. And I would attend those when I could. Those those were actually harder than this because you have so many people. They teach choreography super fast, and I couldn't see anything. It just wasn't a great yeah. way to showcase my talent. Yeah. Um, so I kind of gave up on those, and um, but I didn't give up on getting a dance agent. I got a dance agent. I don't know how many years now. Uh, same agency as like Nico and my friend Sam. And how did you get that agent? through a referral from my friend Chuck, who I know at Gold's Gym, who he and I have the same commercial agent, it turns out. And I got my commercial agent through him Oh wow! As well. I mean, I've That's had so different cool. commercial yeah. agents. But, you know, it's like we're all there to help one another yeah. and support one another. And, you know, um, if they know you, of course, they're going to refer you. I mean, I would only refer somebody. Yeah. Out. So um, that's how I got my dance agent. I didn't have to... I don't even think I sent them a video. I met with the, one of the owners or... Um, one of the head agents who was super nice, had a great conversation. She's like, great, you know, we'll, we'll send you some contracts. 
Wow. So they just like trusted your friend that you were like good enough. That's Pretty much, amazing. Yeah. Well, he, I mean, he's booked some, some really great roles through, through dance and, um, I mean, through that agent. I've gone out on a couple auditions. Not that many though. I mean, it's been slow. It's yeah. Been slow in and you, general. how many years have you had this? Cause yeah, you're still so. with them, right? Yeah, I'm still with them. And how many years have you had them? Probably been with them. What are we in twenty four? I want to say like maybe five years now. Okay, yeah. that's so cool. I love learning all this about you. Yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, like you're giving me ideas. No, I don't know, but um, that's so cool. So I love, yeah, I love that this is your goal. So tell me, so tell me, um, you take Nico's class consistently, a couple times a week, religiously. <laughs> yeah, or two or three times a week, yeah. right? Um, and then. We were kind of talking about this earlier, but do you have any other like totally consistent classes or do you just try different classes as you're like, oh, I want to try this one. I want to try that one. Like outside of Nico's. Well, I was consistent until Darrell went on tour with Madonna. When that tour's <laughs> over, I'm going to go back <sighs> to his class. He used to teach at Team LA at four o'clock on Tuesdays. Hip hop. Jazz, Jazz funk. funk. Jazz funk. You would love okay. it. It's, okay. He's so good and he's so fun. Okay. He's one of those teachers though that he, and you, she's no BS, man. Like you're... <laughs> You're there to train, ah, and stress, but, but, no. but it's all done with love, and yeah. he's just really, he's great. So he was somebody I was taking consistently. I take Boy Boy pretty consistently when he's in town. He teaches uh, at Millennium. Millennium. He also teaches at ML now. Okay. Um, I haven't taken him there. Um, I haven't tried him yet. I might try out, <laughs> I might try, my friend Brad, my best friend Brad and I might try out this new, new-ish studio in Koreatown called Roots. Oh, I've been there. Oh, you have? That's where I took the floor work class, the beginner, like, breakdancing class. Um, I, no, it's a cool, it's a good studio. No, I know, but I can't believe they made you do, like, Oh a yeah, in a beginning. Usually like, they didn't. Yeah. It was like a random thing. Actually, I, I think he was just pushing us, and, like, we ended up having fun. But it actually is very beginner. He, it's almost like... Well, I, I don't take it anymore. Well, honestly, like, he was always busy and traveling the teacher and stuff. And then, like, I don't know. I was taking too many classes on Saturdays. I was taking, like, four classes on oh Saturdays gosh. and, like, ending with that class. And I would get there and just be like, I'm so dead already. But I really liked it. And I really want to get better at floor work, mostly for, like, contemporary. And just mm -hmm. so I can, like, be comfortable on the floor doing different types of things. And so it did help me for a while. That was Brian uh, Salantes. I don't know if I'm saying his last name right, but Roots is, yeah, they have a lot of good classes and they have a new, I went to their old studio and their new one, which we're only like five minutes apart, but they have it there. Oh, wow. It's like their newer one now, I think but I saw the new one. It's on first, right? Mm -hmm. First, the I believe one. so. I haven't been there in a while. I'm like, yeah, is it on first? I think so. Yeah. Cause there's this guy that I've been dying to take. His name is Who? Jeffrey. You see his last name, Calawag or something. I okay. took him during the pandemic online. Love him. But he doesn't teach consistently. He's supposed to teach every Friday at 6 o'clock, like bi-weekly. Mm -hmm. But that would have been this past Friday and he didn't teach. So I don't know the schedule. Yeah. Well, just got to keep. Yeah. But yeah, definitely check out that studio. Um, What was I going to ask I you, though? I used to take heels like a lot. Did you? Yeah, Wait. I used to be, like the heels girl Um, with my friend Jane before she moved to Whittier. We would take religiously uh, at playground where did you take heels saturday morning saturday afternoon was it one o'clock yeah one o'clock uh it was a beginning heels class with alexis did you do you have the heels that with the really thin i'm like i don't even I think even i can walk. walk no i can't even walk i don't even know if i can walk in chunky heels anymore because I, I have not i wear sneakers all the time because i got injured but also like i just have never i've never been like a crazy heel person in general even though i'm short so i feel like i should i should be but I liked it just because we were trying to work on getting more in touch with our sensuality. Yeah. Just, you know, like yeah. Our sexiness. Our yeah. Sexuality, but, um, so how long did, were you taking heels for? Probably for a solid, like, I'm going to say maybe two years. Okay. So you, so jazz, funk, hip hop and heels. Yeah, heels. I, I think I've is there, was there, I is there I'm anything else everything. you forgot to tell me? Uh, <laughs> I'm like, wait a second. Heels is a whole thing. I was taking, not a lot, but I took a few house classes by Ray Bossa. Oh, yeah. So good. I haven't taken Ray Bossa yet, but I took a different house class at ML, and I can't remember the name of the teacher off the top of my head, Is but... V, uh, v? Not V. No. No, I know who you're talking about, but not him. Um, but I can't think of who he is. But it was really fun. Although I will say, my feet and my knees were just we're not used to that. 
<laughs> I was like, oh, I am sore in a different way after oh, this really? class. But it was very fun. I mean, I, I, I was like, ooh, I would enjoy getting better at house. Like, I think it would be fun. It looks so good when people do it's it. It's very just, cool. Yeah, like, I just, love watching it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, I want to try Ray Bassa. He's on my list. It's just like, okay. And also I was going to say, so the work you're doing right now, is it, is it kind of flexible for taking like classes during the day sometimes or cause you're doing like freelance stuff. Yes. And I okay. was in the office at this, um, I got these two new freelance gigs right before I got married. So because they were new, they wanted me, they're two days each. One is for an art consultancy and one is for a plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills. <laughs> I know it's nice. the most random jobs <laughs> ever, <laughs> but they wanted me in the office eight hours a day. Oh, okay. So that was really you're I like, was so Ugh. exhausted. Like between the drive and the work, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I can't even dance anymore. So a couple, I guess like last month, I, I had a conversation with both of them and I said, hey, I need to kind of drop down to 10 hours this job and then working remotely in Beverly Hills only one day. So that's helped a lot. Oh, good. I'm glad you're like, able to like adjust I could leave in the middle it. of the day and... Um, yeah, you're like, on my I have lunch, some other, and then my lunch break, which is two hours, but I don't, I mean, I, I work hourly, so I only build them for the hours I work. Okay. Okay. And, and well, if it's works. slow, and if it's slow, and, and sometimes I will start my, you know, usually start work around nine. If I know I'm taking a dance class, I'll start working at seven thirty yeah. in the morning. If, so you can leave so and I get can, there. Like, can leave for two hours. Yeah. And the work you're doing, is it work? You you get it done during the hours that you say. It's not like you're like they're calling you no. at night or something about no, anything. Not at all. It's, it's not very, like anything like it's, that. It's, they're great in the sense that those jobs, like I leave those jobs. Yeah, I mean, I've had yeah, jobs. It stays there. I've had jobs in the past where they, you know, <laughs> just the stress of it yeah. goes with you. And um, oh, I never answered your other question. You had asked me. Oh, what your job. Well, my favorite. most favorite was. Yeah, and I would say, believe it or not, I worked at. Do you know what Burke Williams is? Yeah. Oh, I actually used... went there for the first time to get a massage like of some months ago. Oh, that was yeah. my favorite job ever. Really? I was working what did you the do? Front de- the front desk. The okay. Front desk. It was great. I made such good friends. You know, because we were all actors or musicians. Okay. Everybody that works there yeah. is in, in the arts, so that was cool. Just really fun people. But also, I had I could make my own schedule. I mean, I wasn't dancing so much back then, but I'm more focused on acting. But yeah. I like the idea. I've always liked the idea of making my own schedule, and I'm just that kind of person. Yeah. And even when I worked at Interscope, even though that was a full-time job, I still, like on Mondays and Tuesdays, I would say to my boss, I need to come in at 7 and leave at 3. Like, or the it's other nice days It's nice to be able like, to do And they let you do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's and, nice. And like 10 to 6 this day, but I wasn't dancing. But it just, they let me... They let me work the hours yeah. that I wanted to work. They don't care as long as I got my work done. Yeah. I mean, some some employers are just very strict in terms of their time. Yeah. Um, my old job was like that. I mean, it was kind of nice in some ways because you pretty much knew you could always leave by 5. But at the same time, you always had to be there 8.30 to 5. That you could never really change it. So. Yeah. I need I need some flexibility. Even if yeah. I'm not going to dance. dance And even cutting back my hours um, at the one job from eight to five makes such a huge difference because now I can like go home and walk or take a dance class yeah. or, or swim or do something before I couldn't even do that because yeah. I would get off at you know six o'clock and it'd be dark yeah if I get off at three o'clock I was like I have so much time now yeah um, oh that's so nice okay what I want to talk about this wedding I will not uh, like the actual wedding. wedding we could but okay. um it's I want to talk about okay first of all I saw the dances from your like bachelorette and wedding and all these things Caroline sent me recently and they were so cool um and I love how dancing is just like incorporated into your wedding like to such a big degree and like so amazing and especially now hearing like how much you were involved with like Ben Allen and Nico and these past jobs and flash mobs and things I'm like oh my gosh this has been like your life it's so cool yeah. but okay um, what I want to hear about, like, did you always, did you always want to get married or was that not something where you kind of more like focused on just like friendships and acting and dance and like, um, it was not till more recently cause you got married recently. So you just got married in September. Wait, October. Yeah, okay. September. So, September um, 21st. So we'll so always it, remember that day. It was like f- almost six months ago. I know you said this earlier. Yeah. Uh, so Yeah. Tell me, like, is it, was it more recent that you decided to really try to, like, make that happen? Or was it just, like, always something you wanted and then it just so happened to happen recently? I think I 
always wanted to get, like, I always saw myself as somebody who would be married, but then, you know, it didn't happen. So I was just like, okay, you know, I'll just continue to date and focus on my friendships and the things that I love to do. And at, at a certain point I was like, if it happens, great. If it doesn't, I have my best friend and we'll travel around the world. And were you just like dating, um, when you were dating through your life, was it, were you using apps and stuff or were you just kind of like meeting people and going on dates or like, how was that for you earlier? before the iPhone, I was meeting people in person. (laughs) Right. I know. Cause like, I guess what else, was there other ways to do it? I don't know. There were. I mean, I would go, I would meet guys. I would go rollerblading on the boardwalk and guys would would ask me out. (laughs) Or I would go to a coffee house and a guy would just walk up to me. Wow. People are so, Wow, that's amazing. Their heads are down on their phones. How can you possibly see in front of you? I know, it's crazy. So, um, and then... Sometimes I would get introduced through friends. Okay. Oh my goodness. Did you get? Did you go on blind dates? So many blind dates, and I would walk away <laughs> thinking like, my friends really do not know me at all. <laughs> like, how could they? Possibly, like, I, I've never gone on a blind blind date with anyone that I thought I would remotely like. It was. Yeah, you're like, what were bizarre. they thinking? Now, is it your single friends or your married friends that were setting up on blind dates? Because I don't. I feel like I wouldn't trust my single friends to set me up on a blind date. Because I'd be like, "Well, why don't? Why aren't you interested in that person?" <laughs> I think with my married friends. Okay, which interesting. Was even more that is interesting. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and then okay. after a while, I started using dating apps. Okay. I wasn't meeting anybody in person because my life was revolving around dance. Yeah. And my friends were gay. Okay. Or yeah, you know, I was in a dance class. Where am I going to meet? a straight guy yeah. in a dance class. Yeah. That was kind of my thing. And, um, you know, my whole, just my whole What about world. acting, though? Did you feel like you met guys there ever? Never. Mm-mm. I met a lot of guys in, when I worked in the music business because that was work. Yeah. You know, um, that was different. Uh, not acting because that's so sporadic. You go on yeah, auditions, that's you don't really true. meet people. Yeah. And even if you're on set, like, I wouldn't hook up with somebody. I mean, I knew people do it, but I just... Yeah. You know, it's like... You did you go. ever do extras work? Yeah, I did. Because I felt like I did extras work for a while when I first moved here, which got old pretty fast. But yeah. I, I would meet... I felt like you could easily meet, like, a million guys. Not that those were necessarily the guys that you would, you wanted or interested in, but, like... <laughs> You're just, like, on set for so many hours waiting in a room, you know? It was just, like, I felt like it was so easy to, like, meet people and guys ask you for your number by the end of it because you've been talking for, like, 14 hours because you've been, like, stuck in a room. (laughs) I've never had that experience, though. I've I've probably been an extra maybe once or twice. Okay. I did it a lot. So, yeah. (laughs) I was, like, I started to be, like, okay, I'm going to read a book and like make it obvious that I don't want to talk until the last few hours of being here because if you start talking with someone initially you will be talking with them for like 12 hours and I am kind of half introvert half extrovert and I get really depleted yeah I'm so so that way too that's funny um okay so then you started so how long were you on the dating apps before you found and because you found your husband on the dating app your current so how 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 much work through these dating apps or how long did you do this until you met him? For years, I did a long time. Because some people find it right away and some people it takes forever. No, and I I met nice guys and I had uh, probably before him, I think I had a couple relationships, you know, like a year long. Okay. A couple couple year long. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, not too bad. Um, And then I would just take a break. I'm like, eh, I'm not into this. You know, so I would be on it for a couple of months and then not see anything. I'm like, eh. Just gonna go back to my life and yeah. table that you know put a pin yeah because you were like it seems like you were content enough like you did want a relationship but you also were doing all these like really cool things and fun things and like it wasn't like you're stuck at this job you hated so you just like marriage was gonna save you from your life or something it was like you had a great life you have a great life yeah, you know and I traveled the arts a lot and with yeah friends, and like I went to Vancouver with my best friend for my birthday oh cool. Um, you know, and then I went to Thailand and wow. Buenos Aires. I mean, I've traveled a lot with family yeah. and friends and stuff. So um, that was also super fulfilling yeah. in addition to dance. Like, those are my two greatest loves are travel okay. and dance. Nice. So then, okay. And on that note, okay. every time I travel, I make sure I take a dance class. Like when Of I went, course. That when would I, be so cool. When I went to the Philippines this past trip, I got to take a, a dance class. I, I kind of ditched my family one day. <laughs> You know, it's, it has to be done very tactfully. Yeah. Um, and then even I booked this. I was in Korea for a film. Um, 
I didn't dance in Korea because we were in quarantine, but um, I had some time in Thailand, so I took a dance class in Bangkok. Wow. So that was fun. That's so cool. Oh my I love gosh. doing that. Oh, I, I, that's what I would love. I mean, I haven't, I'm not like, I'm not like a crazy, I'm not like obsessed with traveling, but if I was going to travel more and if I had the money or wanted to spend money on that, then I would want it. I would just want to take a dance class like here or there. I would just want to pick all of the places that had like dance studios I want to try. And like, I think that would be so cool. Totally. Um, okay. So travel and dance. Yeah. And so then you finally meet this man. Mm-hmm. Wait, what's his name? Steven. Steven. I knew that. I'm like, <laughs> I've seen on Instagram. I haven't met him, but um, okay. So Steven, so tell me what, when you first met Steven, was there something specific that you were like really stood out to you about him or was it not till dating him longer that you started to realize like, oh, maybe he's going to be like the one? There was just something about him. Um, He was playing a keyboard in that profile okay. picture. Yeah. And you're like, musicians, Musician, I'm good with I musicians. Him. I was hanging out with Snoop Dogg. <laughs> no, I do. Like a lot of my like long-term boyfriends were musicians. Okay. So, I, I mean, I hear you. If a guy can, like, play an instrument good, it's, like, it Done. can hook you for sure. For sure. <laughs> for sure. And he's just, you know, like, the kindest human being on the planet Aww. on top of that. And, you know, we, what we, we matched and then we talked on the phone, like, a day later. And we were on the phone for two hours just Aww. talking. Yeah. And then he made a date. And so everything just kind of rolled Did it there. feel kind of smooth with him? Just, like easy talking to him planning things yeah and like after our first date there's never been a day since our first date that i haven't spoken to him wow i know and that was how many years ago almost four years wow because you guys dated for well almost four years yeah and then you got married about three years yeah yeah um and he did you tell me he was an actor too yes he's okay and he thought maybe we met each other before Before. Uh, i'm like no i would have remembered you're like no didn't meet any guy actors (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that looked cute and I would have noticed too. Um, that's so funny. So, and then, and now with his, does, and you told me he can dance, but he doesn't take dance classes. He might come take a dance class. Oh, like, that'd be I cool. Think I could bring him to maybe a beginner dance class, like Dexter's. Okay. I feel like he would yeah. enjoy that. I want to try up. his sometime too. It's really fun. Yeah. He's scary though, because at the really? end he does a cipher. <laughs> Oh, he does? Oh, thanks for telling me that because maybe I, I maybe I won't try it. <laughs> I know. It's like, and then you're like, they point at you. And I'm like, no. no oh my no, gosh, I've that done. That kind of thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was like that when so we stressful. did it. I've done it. I did a cipher. I guess I didn't know it was called a cipher, but I did that in a contemporary class one time. And let me tell you, oh. that was worse than like hip hopper because like, even though I love contemporary, I'm not very good at like improvising it. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, and the people that came to the class, it was at Millennium and they were so good. And I was like, they were like, you can go in the middle for five seconds or for like 20 minutes. We don't care. And like some people were just like going for so long. And I was like, I'm like, okay, when they point at me, I am going to do three moves and I am out of there. And I was trying to figure out the moves I was going to do in my head. <laughs> oh, so so, and one of my friends took the same class the day before and she had warned me because they were doing it she was like i was considering running to the bathroom during it <laughs> it's just like oh it's so stressful i know i wish i could leave early because he does it at the end oh he of does class. at the end right but then he runs like he does it at the end of class but then they run like do the routine one more time that's it what if you just like went in the middle and just started doing the routine you're like well i just learned this <laughs> yes i could <laughs> <laughs> or I could take my husband to, like, Ben Allen does pop-up classes. Yeah, I know. I was like, what? Yeah, I think, I think I'm think i on his email list or oh, something. Oh, you are. Does he do them usually outside, or is it, like, does he do them at places? At places. At different okay. studios. Okay. For some reason, I thought at one point I, he was, maybe it was during the pandemic. Maybe I'm thinking, like, way back oh, now. Maybe. But, um, yeah, I haven't ta- I actually haven't taken him since Edge, but. Um, oh, we may have taken, I wonder if we took his beginning hip-hop possibly. class together. Possibly. I mean, I was. The, on Sundays at 3.30. Yeah. Right? Uh, was it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think so. Why was I thinking it was earlier than that? Well, because he used to teach Tuesdays and Thursdays at 5.30, but then over the years, he gradually gave those classes up and then only had the Sunday class. Yeah. For some reason, I thought it was like er, like earlier morning-ish. Am I totally making that up? Maybe it no, was 3.30. Okay. Well, his Groove 3 class was in the morning. I know. I never took it, though. I only took his... I know I took his beginning hip-hop. Oh, that was at 3.30. And I took it... Bef- but it was before Dean's beginning jazz funk. And yes. I would take both of them. And I would be dying. I was sweating my brains out from both of those classes. <laughs> right. Because Dean was at 5.30. Okay. Jazz I don't know why I was thinking their classes were more towards the morning. 
because I thought it was when I used to go to church at night or something, and so I would take those in the morning and then go. But maybe I'm maybe I'm just mixing it up. Anyways, I used to yes, take Dean too. Dean Did taught you? at um, Golds. I I think I knew that too. Yeah. I don't. Maybe we did know each other and just didn't realize it, or yeah. we like saw each other. So okay, very happy for you with your marriage. Um, what do you feel like that? Like now you have even a, like you you have multiple jobs and auditions and you're doing dance and now you're married. Do you like? Do you like cook more because you're married? Do you do you feel like you have a lot more? Obviously, you're spending time with him, but you've been doing that for four years, anyways. But mm-hmm. like with like living with him and eating with him and all, do you feel like you still have time for all the things that you want to do, or do you feel like oh, I've kind of had to make? Not that it's a bad thing because you love it, but like yeah. you have you kind of had to make some adjustments because you're like oh, I'm married now, so now I kind of do these things more. Definitely, I definitely okay. have made adjustments. Um, you know, because when I was single, I would just, like, take dance classes all the time and yeah. not think twice about yeah. it, you know? I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I'd work and go straight to a dance class. Yeah. There's no questions asked. Right. I was never home. And now that I'm married, I just have to be, like, even yesterday I took a class, but I only took a class because he had a day off. He's like, well, I'm going to go swimming. I'm like, cool, then I'm going to go <laughs> take a dance class while you're doing that. I mean, I, you know, even though we live together and um, it's just... It's just funny because you still have to carve out quality time with one another. We still yeah. have to sit down. I started doing these weekly meetings called Serenity Sundays. We're going to do it when we get home. Um, where we just kind of go through okay. the week and like, okay, we're going to plan out, make sure we plan a date night okay. out. And just talk about where we are in a relationship. How are we doing financially? That's so good. How are we doing mentally, emotionally, spiritually? Um yeah, we do that once that a week. That sounds like super healthy. <laughs> it's a great way to start. I feel like that's something people might do like way into it after there's like all these problems or something. But I think that's like so good to just be proactive. Like, you know, we're doing great, but let's start doing this because we're so busy and like we want to make sure. Yeah, we want to make yeah. sure that we, we spend time together. Yeah. You know, like we could easily fall into a routine of just me working, doing my, you know, he's working, I'm working. And then before you know it, it's like, 9 30 and time to go to bed yeah and oh my gosh not, we, yeah yeah we had dinner and that was it i know so and we, but we try to take walks you know we live in silver lake so we make a point of taking walks together or i mean we're really we're really mindful of making sure that we prioritize and keep our marriage at the you know yeah the forefront because yeah we don't wanna, you know he's been married before i've never been married okay so um you know we we both want to give it our best yeah best shot definitely that's so amazing I know I'm always curious because I'm like I don't have a strong I used to want to get married I don't have a strong desire to get married anymore I'm not like opposed to it necessarily if it like just comes to me but like I (laughs) I'm like doing nothing proactive for that and to the to the point where I'm like I feel like that would mess up my life (laughs) well it's It's funny that you say that because (laughs) I actually as I've gotten older I've never first of all I've never wanted to have children okay I've, I've known that about myself okay for for ever yeah I think I mean I love kids I love being an aunt and then I like going because I like my freedom so yeah I like to you know go and do my thing um but even when we when I met my husband I wasn't sure that I wanted to get married but you know yeah we were committed and we were going to be together for life like that was a given but I was like do we really need to get married mm-hmm. you know, why why do why do we want yeah. to get married and so these were the the questions um we were asking ourselves and one another, and I think we decided to. Well, I know we decided to. We decided <laughs> to do it because we did it. But, but really just because um, we wanted to make that that spiritual commitment. Like we okay. wanted to formalize it. We wanted to uh, celebrate our union with the people that we love who were mostly, da- you know, on my side, there were so many dancers. You know, my whole life revolves around dance. Yeah. Like, all of my really, really good friends I've met through dance class. And then those people introduced me to other people. And, you know, that that's how my circle has grown. And I look at that. And, you know, when I did my first dance, these are all the people that I've been dancing with for over 10 years. You know, wow. I've been dancing with all these people for over 10 years. And are these... Okay, because I was going to ask you about this, too. Like, I know we're not going to go for a ton longer. But, like... um yeah, because you have, it seems from, like, your Instagram and stuff you've shown me, and, like, it seems like you have sort of a core group of people that you, like, I don't know, do you do, like, dance projects with them, or, like, do some of, 
do people in the group make up choreography that you guys do sometimes? Or like, I don't know, I've just seen like videos and things. Yeah, like uh, one of my friends, a couple of my friends will do that. We'll have, um, you know, they're just dancers who take a lot of classes, but they also choreograph. I'm not yeah. a choreographer. I think okay. And I spoke about this. I'm not a teacher. I'm not a choreographer. I just No interest in that. Okay. Zero interest. I mean, I've taught you know, one-on-ones and small groups. And it was fun. It was, it was just hard. Yeah. You know, it isn't like the most, it is hard. Fun. I'd like rather produce a dance competition than teach. Which is dance. amazing. <laughs> that is such a cool skill. I'm like, wow, you're so talented. <laughs> but okay. So yeah, but you have your group and you guys. Core group. Uh, well, during the pandemic, my best friend Brad and I, we did TikToks every day. Oh but my we gosh. we have theme TikTok. That's TikTok. So, funny. so it might be Mariah Monday. So you'd have to do a TikTok to Mariah. And then Tuesday might be TLC. So it, it kept us creatively engaged during during a really hard time and yeah. kept us dancing and yeah i danced a decent amount during the pandemic just taking i danced classes. so much i feel like Zoom i danced classes. more in the pandemic i did too did you mostly take classes um like virtual classes out of la or did you do any like programs like like online subscription classes or did you do classes out of other states or places yeah, I took did you a do class everything from england once wow um, in the beginning of the pandemic i don't know if you remember this but everybody was doing an instagram live class oh yeah i remember and i was doing everything i was trying to follow it but i that was like not working for me very well oh, really? but i remember that yeah i loved it and nico did i went to all of nico's yeah instagram live classes it was so fun and then i have a friend in san francisco who i adore and he was teaching classes um, on Zoom. Okay. So I was taking him for a while, and then obviously things opened up. I'm like, I'm going to go to San Francisco to take your class now. But, <laughs> You're um, like, oh, great. Now, I have, now, I, now I'm having FOMO about all these other places I want to go. Yeah. But I'm um, doing that. And if I can't go to a dance class, I haven't done it in a while, but I would do a TikTok just to stay Yeah. not quite dance. But sometimes you can find some decent Yeah. Dances. It's hard to learn dances from TikTok. Me and my old roommate tried to do that once in a while and I'm like oh my gosh we would like play it in slow motion and like I'm like I want to just be in class where they teach it I don't like trying to like follow it and learn it and figure it out I don't enjoy that process yeah I used to get some people are good at that though I used to get a ton of classes at BDC yeah I was too we yeah. probably took class together I know. probably did take class <laughs> did you ever remember. take Q Never at BDC because I was hip-hop I'm trying to think because I, I didn't took Carlos Oh, Carlos Nito. I, he was great. I took so him. I didn't take him like all the time because I don't think it fit in my schedule regularly, but I took him quite a few times. His beginner class was great. I felt like I was always killing it. And then when I would take his like more advanced or like advanced beginner or something, mm-hmm. I was like, dang, this is hard. <laughs> but I liked him. And do you know Guy Gro- you know who Guy Groove is? Yes, but I never took him. But yes, I know who he is. He used to teach a dollar class on what? Saturdays. So I would That's do so that cool. on Saturdays. Virtually? And virtually. Wow. And my husband remembers me taking those classes because we were early in dating. Okay. And like, hey, I want to take this dollar class. That's amazing. That's so cool. I know a lot of teachers during the pandemic um, were giving really good deals like I didn't hear about that good of a deal but like just because like everyone was like struggling and they're trying to be but then I was thinking but like aren't they struggling I feel like we should be paying them more (laughs) you know but a lot of them were just so nice to try to like help the dance community like stay in class and everything so I just remember it being like so nice how cheap they were making everything yeah it was a good time um that's good yeah. Oh, it's so, gosh, your life is so interesting. I'm like, dang, I like the time is passing so fast. I'm like, wow. what else have you done? Gosh. Um, do you have, okay. I'm going to like, I, I'm going to f- wrap it up with a question, but first, like, do you have anything else you were like, you thought about when you were like knowing you were going to do this today or anything else you wanted to like share or story or a thought dance wise or life wise or I think we covered everything. I know we covered a lot. We covered so many so things. okay. So other than, you know, like this has just been a really difficult period in my life. Like this year has been a little bit of a um Oh really? Well my uncle passed away. Oh yeah, that's right. On Wednesday. And then two days later my younger sister had to put her dog down. Oh. oh that is oh, really sad. Pets and- are I don't have a pet, but there's a pet that I watch all the time and literally if I think cat. about a cat and I'm literally like if I think about the fact that he's getting older I'm like oh my gosh I don't want to think about it and it kind of gave me more compassion for people who have pets that die because I haven't had a pet in a long time so when people are really sad over pets dying I'm like 
okay, but I don't really feel it. But since this cat has become a part of my life for a long, like a lot of years now, mm. I'm like, oh yeah, that sounds horrible. And yeah, I had like, two cats and one, they were 16 and 17. And I, oh. My cat's going to be, seven, my new cat's going to be 17 already. Wow. Like, and wait, how long do cats live to? Usually, like tw- up to twenty five years. Okay, we've already told okay. Abby. Okay, that's not, good to know. She's, okay, Abby's not, Abby can't die before us. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but um, oh, I, the man. only reason I bring that up, and um, uh, because dance has really saved my life in mm. so many ways during the pandemic. During you know, like my friendships all revolve around dance. Dance has gotten me through my when my dad passed away in twenty twenty one. Um, I remember taking my friend Sam Allen's class online. Like it, it helps me just emotionally. It helps me just be right <laughs> inside. And yeah. I, I feel that like if I don't dance like every, I don't know, two or three days, I feel like I get like really kind of I know. And like Sometimes I'm grouchy too. And I'm like, I don't know why I'm in such a bad mood. And then the next day I like go to dance. I'm like, I think it's because I didn't go to a dance class yesterday. <laughs> oh, it's it is interesting how it is. It makes a huge difference it, in terms yeah. of like my mental health yeah and my happiness it's like, your social life too it like becomes it that like that was never I never was trying to make friends through dance but it's like you just even if you're not trying to you just eventually do and you obviously like really really have and you've been doing it for like a long time so it's obviously like your social circle and then I don't know it seems like I'm sorry this year has been hard with like specifically these different things, but like it's also I don't know, your life just sounds like so good. It's it like, is really good. You and have you your yourself. new husband and you have you have dance and you still have acting and it seems like your jobs are things that like work for you right now with your schedule and yeah. did you ever have a time that um you couldn't like afford dance classes or you felt like oh, how am I going to be able to take dance classes? Whether it was like your schedule or money or anything that was like stopping you from being able to take dance I think when I was working, you know, these new jobs, I was a little concerned about when I would, I mean, Nico was the only, well, actually, Nico, I was making sure I took classes on my days off, which were Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So early on, like, I guess it was like July, August, I was making sure that I definitely was in at least two dance classes. Yeah. I need to dance at least two dance classes classes a week yeah my sanity um in the beginning when I was at gold sometimes I would take classes let's see three four five I would take anywhere from five to maybe ten classes a week at golds yeah they had so many dance classes that's what I was doing at edge I was taking like well I'm doing that kind of now but I've been yeah taking like a lot (laughs) yeah and even like before the pandemic I think I was probably averaging about three to four okay now I'm lucky if I get to three yeah. I think I'm still doing it. Even though in my mind I think I'm not, I think I, I get to about three three classes a week. Yeah. Well, that's good. I uh, Anyway, it's so, yeah, it's good to just, it's just good to learn about you. I'm excited to learn about you more as we just become yeah, more friends. I but, um, um, yeah, so, okay, we'll just wrap it up. Do you have any um, advice for anyone out there that just from, like, all of your years of experience of, like, dancing and networking, not, I, networking is, like, a weird word to use because, like, really you just became friends with people, but, mm-hmm. like, um, through all of your experience, which you have a lot of, like, what what kind of advice would you give to anyone who's, like, starting out in dance or a dancer that's, like, discouraged? Um, I don't know. Do you have any advice you would give, like, a, a new dancer or a discouraged dancer? Anything about, like, about anything? <laughs> Well, for anybody that's new, I would just encourage people to take as many classes as you can. You yeah. Know, if it's in your budget, it fits in your schedule because that's how we learn and grow. And, and you know, I still aspire to taking more classes yeah. and challenging myself with different styles and um, new teachers. I mean, it's scary. Like, we witnessed tonight. <laughs> yeah. But we did it, you know. Yeah. And it's not about perfection. And, I like, for me, growing up a perfectionist, like when I first started out dancing, it was so hard because I could was making mistakes all over the place. And it's not about that. At the end of the day, it's about having fun and doing something that you you enjoy and that you love. And I think that's what sometimes people get forget about. It's like you mm-hmm. do this because you love it. Yeah, you know. And don't don't ever lose touch with the joy that brought you here in the first place. Yeah. And you know, just kind of trusting the process if you're if you're pursuing a, a dance career professionally, like things will fall into place and you just keep putting your foot in you know, one foot in front of the other as cliché as that sounds and you keep sharing your gift cuz that's really all it is. You know, when we when we dance, we're just expressing who mm-hmm. we are and 
you know, everyone is unique. You know, nobody, yeah, you can d- look like the choreographer, but that's not the point. The point yeah. is to bring who you are yeah. into the steps and, and, you know, feel it the way you do. So I'm always, I'm always like, you know, Dexter's one of those people that really inspires me just the way he moves. Like, how do you do that? Yeah, he's We're so doing good. the same steps. <laughs> and my body doesn't look anything like, not that I'm trying to, but I just like, even in his beginning hip hop class, he talks about like, loosening up more i'm like i don't know if my body like he's so like loose up here and fr- like, oh yeah my body to yeah be, to move like yeah that. but one time when i was taking um i was a jazz funk class at millennium and i'm blanking out on the teacher's name i only went a few times but i remember i took class with three other people and they were all like super super good and it was called open level jazz funk or something but like i was the only one that i was at like a lesser level <laughs> But, and then he had us do groups in a four person class. So like I went with one person and he gave really good critiques to everybody. It was amazing because I didn't even know how he could critique these other people because they were so good. But the critique he gave me after we went, he was like, oh, you did such a great job. He was like, I didn't have the choreo completely and I did not do as good as them. But he was like, he was like, I really like watching you dance next to her because you just dance so differently and it's really cool. He's like, it's very interesting. And he's like... I would want to tell you, like, don't ever try to look like anybody else, any other dancer. Like, just try to get better at the way that you dance. Like, just keep training to get better, but don't ever try to make it look like somebody else. Just, like, bring yourself because the way you dance is different, but it's, like, good. And I, like, it can stand out and it can look really cool. And so I just, like, really was encouraged by that because it's, like, yeah, sometimes I look at other dancers and I'm, like, I'm never going to, like... Um, I'm never going to dance. Like, who are you just mentioning? Oh my gosh. No, I'm looking at Dexter. I'm like, you're like, I'm never, how am I ever going to move my body like that? Not that you want to look exactly like him, but just like, it's so amazing, you know, but it's like, you have your own look and your own style and the way you do it. And so just the more you take, you're just growing and like, and I love that you're like, I think you've just taken dance for so long and you've just built it for so long that you're you can you can take two or three classes a week and you're still growing so much and you're trying new classes but you're also like going to be growing in your marriage and you're going to be growing in your acting and you're going to be growing in all these ways so I think it's cool that you're just like in this new season of yeah. just like growing in these other ways it's, now and like it's pretty awesome but you're not losing dance and I think that's really cool because I think sometimes we maybe do stay away from other blessings in our life because we're like but I don't want to like lose this thing but like there's ways to adjust and still get like lots of different joys and stuff in life so definitely anyway love you that this advice yeah so amazing thank you for just have being so interesting to talk to for an hour and 12 minutes i just like <laughs> i was like i don't know how this is gonna go but it was just so fun so thank you for coming on my podcast um i will let you know when it's gonna be released and um oh we're supposed to say like like and subscribe and follow or whatever it is with on whatever platform you're listening <laughs> make okay. sure you do that yes <laughs> okay bye. bye oh my gosh <laughs>